Hey, everybody. All right, let me get this muted. All right, let's see. We are a lesson 11 6 volume of prisms and pyramids. All right, you guys. So there's probably going to be some uh, weird looking formulas here and weird looking symbols and stuff. So hang in for the ride. All right, let's see what we got. Volume of prisms, volume of pyramids. All right, let's, they're going to start off with the prism, uh, which is the volume of the area of the base times the height of the prism. Now, let, let me make sure you understand. This capital B right here is the area of the base. So if it's a cube, then it'll be the area of the square. If it is a rectangular prism, it'll be the area of the rectangle. If it's a triangular prism, it'll be the area of the triangle. If it's anything else, it's the area of the base. Now, H is the height of the prism. So you need to know that's the one that runs from one base to the other base. So if you're looking like at a triangular prism, the height is the, the, the segment that runs from one triangle to the other triangle or rectangle to the other rectangle. Um, yeah, let's just get into it. Oh, okay, uh, looks like they're going to have obliques. Uh, that's when you have a prism that kind of has this little lean going on here. So the height can be straight up and down, running from a uh, rectangle at the top, rectangle to the bottom, or it can have some kind of oblique thing um, where you've, you've got it kind of leaning, and it's still the height that runs from one base to the next base. All right. Okay, they are starting out with a prism that has a base of a pentagon. So this uh, is a pentagonal prism, everybody. So you have the pentagon at the top, you have the pentagon at the bottom. All right, so we need to find the area of the base. And that means we need to find the area of this pentagon. So the formula for the capital B is the formula for the pentagon, which is one half A. Remember, that is your apothem. And then the P is the perimeter of the pentagon. Okay, so if you're wondering where all of this information is coming from, uh, go back and look at my area of um, regular figures video. Uh, right now, I cannot remember what lesson that is in, but uh, yeah, look back at that if you're having a hard time with the area of regular figures. Whoo, excuse me. All right. Uh, okay, so let's see. It's one half the um, apothem, which oh, they gave me is 3.4. Okay, that's nice. And uh, so the 2.5, um, let's see. What are we doing here? 3.4, uh, something is not right. 2.5 is not the perimeter. It looks like this is a typo, and it should have been the perimeter is 25. Because 5, 5, 5, 5, and 5 is 25. So I'm saying this is a typo right here. 2.5, something's not right. So it should have been 1 half the 3.4 times the 25. All right, so that's going to be an oops on their part. Um, yeah, I'm calling typo on that, everybody. Uh, so let's see here. So find the area. Okay, okay. So we got that is 42.5. Okay. Um, volume of the prism. So we're going to take that 42.5 and we're going to multiply by the eight, which is the height. Now remember height is the one that runs from pentagon to pentagon. So the area, of uh, the 42.5, we multiply times eight. Um, so let's see. 42.5 times eight. I'm not sure where that should have been right there. Uh, let me grab a calculator. I'm not sure what they want for that extra mumbo jumbo. So we're going to multiply those two things and we're going to get 340. And it's going to be uh, squared millimeters or millimeters to the second power. All right. So it's like, there we go. Step two. Okay. So now we need to find the volume of this prism. The volume of the prism is 340. Oh, okay. Gosh, I hate when they give me this really long line here, and they should have put this above the line. 
All right, so we got to check here. We need to find the volume of this triangular prism. Now, that means that the base here is a triangle. There's your other base, the triangle in the back. So this is a prism, triangular prism. All right, so the formula for a triangular prism, again, the volume is B times H. But this time, the B, we have to replace with the formula for the area of a triangle. So it's going to be 1 half BH times H. Now listen, if you're a brand new teacher, your kids are going to get lost right there. I guarantee you they're going to get lost on where that second H is. So it can be kind of confusing to them. All right. So volume equals capital B times H. But in this case, the capital B is one half base times height for the triangle and then times the height of the prism. And again, brand new teachers, your students can be like, oh, hang on, why are there two H's? One H is for the height of the triangle. The other H is for the height of the prism. So spend a, a significant amount of oomph <laughs> in your words to make sure that they understand the difference between one h and the other h because I'll, I'll tell you now they're, they're going to be confused all right so the base of the triangle is a nine and they did not give us the height of the triangle here well they did give us the hypotenuse that means we've got to do a Pythagorean theorem, everybody, to find the height of the triangle. So just when you think you get away from Pythagorean theorem, uh, yeah, no, here it is again. So it's going to be a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we've got a squared plus 9 squared equals 15 squared. So below this, oh, wow, what happened? Below this, I'm going to put... Um, the a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So a squared plus the nine squared equals the 15 squared. And again, 15 being the hypotenuse. Subtract nine squared to the other side. And in the calculator, it's going to be 15 squared minus nine squared, which is going to be 144. The opposite of squaring is to square root. And that ends up being 12. Because the square root of 144 is 12. Now, if you are someone who can recognize a 3, 4, 5 triangle pretty quickly, um, th this could be it for you, the 3, 4, 5 triangle. So it's just one of those triples we've talked about in the past. All right. So that means my height of the triangle base is 12. Now, remember, I had to multiply the area of the triangle times the height of the prism. By definition, the height is the side that runs from triangle to triangle. That's your 10. So we're going to replace the height of the prism with a 10. Okay, so shoot on down here. Now I've got 1 half 9 times 12 for the area of the triangle times 10 for the height of the prism. Do all of that together. And it looks like we're going to end up with, uh, let's see, 54, because that's not as well as half of that is 54 times 10, but 540, 540, well, that's my volume, let me back up, volume, 540, and that's going to be a uh, cubic, cubic, and oh, I messed up, that should have been a cube right there, yes, I just realized that, and this is feet cubed to the power of three, so 540. 540 and let me fix that boom okay you guys if you were sitting there going yeah well, you made a mistake you're right i made a mistake that should have been volume volume is always cube all right so we got 540 cubic feet there's your check and we'll move on to example number two all right looks like we got uh, an oblique prism and i noticed that this base is a trapezoid okay so this is a trapezoidal prism because the base is a trapezoid. There's your other base. There's your other trapezoid. 
Okay, so to find the area of a trapezoid, we have to use the formula for the area of a trapezoid. One half the height times base one plus base two. All right, so it looks like the height of the trapezoid, because this is a right angle right there, looking at this trapezoid is a five. And then our bases are the ones that are parallel. That'll be the four and the two. All right, so we need to add four and two to get six times five is 30. Half of that would be 15. So the area of the trapezoid is 15. Now we need to multiply this by the height of the prism. And again, by definition, that is the one that runs from trapezoid to trapezoid. This is your eight, everybody, eight centimeters. So 15 times the eight, and that's going to be 120, and that's going to be cubic centimeters. There we go. 20. There we go. All right, 120 cubic centimeters. Okay, let's see. Oh, we've got to check here. Got to find the volume of the oblique rectangular prism. Okay, no problem. So the B here, the area of the base, is base times height for the rectangle. And then times the height of the prism, and that's going to be your 2.2. Well, if you are a new teacher, for rectangular prisms, sometimes your students might understand length times width times height better. Because I believe that's the way our middle school teachers teach it. Length, width, and height is the volume of a cube or volume of a rectangular prism. So it might just be easier on them to say, hey, look, I got to multiply 2.5 times 4.9 times 2.2. Just might be easier for, for understanding length and width and height. All right, so everybody, grab a calculator. Multiply 2.5 times 4.9 times your height, 2.2. And you're going to end up with 26. Point ninety five, and that's going to be squared meters. All right, example number three. What we got here? Volume of a prism using algebraic expressions. <laughs> All right. Well, this should be fun. Okay, so it's a again a rectangular prism. So listen, we might have an easier time going length, width, and height. Length and width toward for the area of the base and then the height of the prism. So length, width, and height just might be easier um, if you're a brand new teacher for your students to understand. Okay, so we got uh, 4x times x. That's going to be your length and your width. That's going to be 4x squared. And let's see, power 2. So and that's going to be your capital B. Again, 4x times x is 4x squared. That's your capital B. Now that we need to multiply by the height of the prism. And y'all, that's going to be the 4x plus 3. So we're going to multiply a 4x squared times a 4x plus 3. It looks like this is distribu distributive. So 4x squared times 4x is 16x cubed. And 4x squared times 3 is 12x squared. Again, that's called the distributive property. All right, so looks like we are done with finding the volume, but up next I see they want us to do a little plugging and chugging. So find the volume of the jukebox, choose some box if X is two. All right, that means you're gonna plug and chug a two, everybody. So take that X out, replace it with a two. Take that X out, replace it with a two. And grab your calculators. So replacing everything with two. So it'll be 16 times two to the third power plus 12 times 2 squared is 176, and that's going to be cubic inches. All right. If you have any question, go online. They've got an extra example there. Um, or, or, yeah, ask a question of me if you want me to. All right. Volume of pyramids. Okay. New formula. New formula. Volume of pyramids is one-third. Base times the height. Now, again, that capital B is the area of the base. Now, a pyramid is only going to have one base, everybody. For this one right here, there is your base. And this one right here, here is your base. So please keep that in mind. A pyramid only has one base where a prism has two. So the height, be very careful, has to be the perpendicular the perpendicular height, not slant height. Um, 
for for you guys that live in Tennessee, if you've ever been down to Bass Pro, uh, I always tell my students, look, you can take a tube and ride down the side of the pyramid that is your slant height. If you want to take the elevator to the observation deck, the elevator is right in the middle of the building. It is smack dab in the middle where it's perpendicular. It goes straight up to the top. That is the true height. That is the height you need for the volume. All right, let's get into it. Example number four. All right, here's the formula. One third, the area of the base times the height of the, whoa, the pyramid. And they don't have to waste any time, do they? They give me one, two, three, four, five, six, a hexagonal pyramid. That means that its base is a hexagon. Fun. Okay. Oh, thank you, Lord. They give us the B. Okay, so I don't have to find the area at the base. It is just 22. So I'm going to multiply one third times 22 times the height, which is five. All right. So I guess, uh, yeah, grab a calculator. One third. You know what? I'm going to type it in here so you guys can see it. One third times 22. And then times the five. All right, grab a calculator that's going to give us, uh, looks like a 36 point repeating six, or uh, repeating six would be a two thirds, 36 and two thirds uh, cubic centimeters. So a repeating six. All right, let's move on. What we got up next? Example five. Oh gosh, okay, here we go. Oh, uh, we need to see what's going on here. Martin bought a bank shaped like a square pyramid, and he wants to calculate its volume. Okay, so, it, okay, first off, square pyramid. That means 8x and 8x are the length and width of the base. They are the same, 8x times 8x. And you can put 64x squared if you want to, or like they did here, it's going to be 8x squared. Um... Hmm. Uh, uh, what is this? Another typo? Yeah. Uh, the two goes on the outside, fellas. The two goes on the outside because eight x times eight x is sixty four x squared. You type it like this. Uh, yeah, you're looking at eight x squared, not sixty four x squared. So it looks like we got another typo. Come on, people. You guys are supposed to be smarter than me, and you keep making typos. That's not good. 64x squared. Let's get it together, y'all. Let's get it together. All right. So 64x squared. Again, typo here. Uh, yeah, oops. Okay. Um, oh, man. Okay, so we got to do the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, I noticed they give me the slant height here. This is not true height. God, y'all are so mean. Nasty people. Nasty, nasty people. Um, you know what? Hang tight. Uh, if you're a visual person, you're probably wondering what's going on here. So hang tight. I'm going to pause this video, and I'm going to pull up my GeoGebra so I can show you guys here. Give me just a second. Let me pause this. All right, you guys. Um, so I'll just do kind of a quick little drawing here. Um, in 3D GeoGebra here. All right, so um, make sure you understand what's going on. This slant height is 5x. I need to find the true height, the one that runs from the tip of the pyramid straight down. Okay, so first off, you need to understand that you're looking at a right triangle here. I'm looking at this this right triangle. First off, 8x is all the way across, which means if I split it, I got 4x and 4x. So this little segment right here is going to be 4x. The hypotenuse is 5x, and I need to find the true height, which is the unknown. So if you're wondering where they got this Pythagorean theorem from, that is it. Uh, it's a right triangle on the inside of, of this pyramid. So 4x, because that's half of 8. 4x plus h squared equals 5x squared. So if you're wondering where this came from, that, that is it. So subtract 4x squared to the other side. So 5x squared uh, minus 4x squared 
Uh, so it's going to be what 25 x squared minus 16 x squared. Uh, so that's going to be um, what nine, nine, nine x yeah nine. Um, okay, so uh, the opposite of of squaring is to square root. So it'd be three x, three x. Oh gosh, Sandy. Okay, I just had a dumb moment. A three four five triangle. Here we are again. So three four five triangle. I wasn't thinking, I wasn't thinking three, four, five, and I should have, because uh, I said there is your four, and, and, you know, the hypotenuse is five, so three, four, five triangles, so it'd be three x. All right, so my height is three x. All right, so I'm coming back and multiply one third times 64 x squared times three x. Well, here's the lovely thing. One third and three cancel each other out. Yep, uh, a number and it's reciprocal. That's the same thing as one. So it cancels each other out. And that just leaves the 64. But don't forget, x squared times x would be x cubed. So this would be 64 x to the third power. Okay. So there's your volume of the pyramid. Okay. Okay, so here it is, part B. They want me to replace x with a 4. So I'm going to do 64 times 4 to the power of 3. All right. Grab my calculator, so, uh, 4 to the power of 3 times 64, 4,096 cubic inches. And again, that's 4,096 cubic, cubic inches, everybody. All right. Do you have any questions? Let me know. There's an extra example online if your teacher gets it to you. All right. Example 6. Oh, composite. Okay. So what a composite is, is more than one figure going on. Like, for instance, we had this prism on the bottom that box and a pyramid sitting on top so we need to find the volume of the prism the volume of the pyramid and add them together prism's the easiest you guys length width and height three times six times six three times six times six go ahead and do that one first because that one's the, probably the easiest so anywhere anyway 36 times six uh, let's see, it was 36 times 6 is 108. 108. Now, again, that's the, just the volume of the prism. 108 cubic inches. Now we got to find the volume of the pyramid. That's going to be 1 third, 6 times 6. And we need to do a Pythagorean theorem to find the height of the pyramid and when i split a six into three and three i'm going to get another three four or five triangle uh three four and the hypotenuse is a five triangle so i really don't need to do the pythagorean theorem one third six times six times four all right so uh let's see one third times 36 times four that's going to be 48 that's the volume of the pyramid. You need to combine that 108 from the volume of the prism to the 48 with the volume of the pyramid and add them together. All right, so a total of 156 in cubic inches. There's your example number six, which is not as bad as I thought it was going to be. All right, oh, okay, got another one. Example number seven. Okay, we need for a competition chocolatier created a replica of the Washington Monument made entirely of white chocolate. Okay, approximate the volume of the chocolate used to create the sculpture. All right, so I've got a pyramid sitting on top of a prism. So we need to find the volume of the prism, the volume of the pyramid, add them together. Okay, well, here goes. Um... So is it a square? A square? Yes, it is a square prism. All right, which means a 6.5 times 6.5. Okay, just checking. All right, so 6.5 times 6.5, and then the height of the uh, prism is the 36. All right. So that's going to be 6.5 times 6.5 times 36 is 1,521. And again, that's just the prism itself, so we need to go to the pyramid. So it's going to be 6.5 times 6.5, and they give me the true height. Thank you, 6.5. So 6.5 times 6.5 times 6.5. Don't forget the one-third, because that is important. 
91.54, yada, 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 yada. All right, add them together. 1,521 plus uh, 91.54 with some change gives me 1,912.5, and that's going to be cubic inches. Okay, let's move on. Oh, I'm done. Woo woo. All right. Try to practice, you guys. If you get in trouble, you have a question, ask your teacher, ask me. I will be happy to help. You guys have a great day.